I see you on the other side. All right, this is minute normal mode any percent. Uh, one thing I want to preface the run with is this is a very quick, very quick run. Um, you're going to see me dying a lot and resetting. Uh, that actually happens when I push the C button. It takes me back to my previous checkpoint, and it happens a lot, it happens often. So I really like to preface the runs with that. So with that slight note, uh, three, two, one, let's go. So this is Minute. Uh, the whole concept of this game is that you have 60 seconds to play and go through each cycle, as you can see in the counter in the top left corner. Uh, the game opens up with you finding a sword on the beach, which is actually a cursed item that turns the timer on in the first place. And right away we're going to be grabbing this watering can, which we're going to need later in the run. Uh, this is where a marathon run's going to deviate slightly. In order to make it clear for the viewers, I'm going to be getting an item called the flashlight. Uh, usually the speedrun would actually skip the flashlight and prevent picking it up, saving uh, just under a minute. But for viewers' sake, I'm going to be picking it up. And what I've been doing is killing those crabs in order to get the coffee. Uh, the coffee is what allows us to push blocks like this one here to grab the lighthouse key. And we're going to do a reset because it's going to be closer to head to the lighthouse from the house. And that's how this run works, generally speaking, is you reset to get closer and you reset to restock your time. That's a lot of very fast-paced planning, very interesting to run. And we finally have the flashlight, so we're gonna reset head back to, back to home, and right away you actually see one of the rooms that you have to do without the flashlight. So usually this room would be completely in the dark. Uh, there's three dark rooms that you actually need the flashlight for. Well, not need the flashlight for, but uh, the flashlight is useful in three, three or four. Head here and leave again. Uh, that little animation that was on the edge of the screen, that actually meant we were getting a new checkpoint. So now we're going to respawn there. Four, five. I went up and down various screens there in order to make the game think that we are actually further along in the desert than we actually were. So we did that in order to get that ghost, and the ghost had the sword thrower, which is actually a very useful attack that allows us to throw our sword at range. Which is going to be very useful on the final boss and saves a little bit of time elsewhere. Uh, right now we're grabbing that watering can or to save that man in the desert real quick. Hope you didn't blink. And since we saved them, they're actually going to be right here and they're going to give us a reward. And this hut right here. And this one's another very important item. It's the gardening glove. And the gardening glove allows us to break stumps like this one right here. Next up, we're going to reset our checkpoint again. And now we're going to head over to the next area. Up and up and up. Fairly good movement on the bandits there. Heading to get another checkpoint. Uh, this is also where the route's going to differ slightly. We're going to stay alive because there's... And what we're looking for right now is five hotel guests. Um, one of them right there, the one flailing around to the left. We'll be able to talk to them after we kill all the other enemies on the screen. But most importantly, this character right here, we can't talk to until the timer's at at least 10 seconds. So you want to make sure you route in being at less than 10 seconds when getting to that screen. Uh, next up, we're going to head over to the left here. Uh, that bit of damage we took shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, what we need to do is push this character onto a very specific square. Fortunately, it's the same square every time. Just line it up. There we go. 
that's three. Next guest that we need to find is over this way. We need to uh, talk to them on the ground. In order to do so, we want to lower all the trees except the one we're in. We talk to them, warp out again. Next up is the next dark room. Uh, this part of the dark room's not too bad, but what we need to do is actually blow up these bombs right here. So it can actually be a kind of tricky part of the run for new runners, is blowing up those bombs in the dark and not dying, since you have to be within, uh, outside of the range of the explosion. Hitting that switch in order to lower the bridge, making sure to walk low to talk to another guest, and the last guest we need to find is right under there. And the reason that we were finding all those guests was to lower the ladder and get these flippers. The flippers are actually going to allow us to sneak into the next area. Save a tiny bit of time by going through the water there. And what we're about to see is some water. So this water right here would have been impossible to go through without picking up the flippers. Trying to push these two blocks at the same time for as long as possible. Unfortunately, I didn't line up with the wall fast enough there. Should still have plenty of time to get this last box, although it's going to be a little tighter than I'd like. And here, as soon as the box is moving on its own, we reset, which saves a little bit of time, even though we died, since even though we died, as long as the gears break, they'll still count as broken. So we're going to move on, head this way, back up this way again. And what breaking the gears did is it turned off this conveyor belt for all future runs. The next thing we need to do is turn off the second conveyor belt. Heading this way, making sure to hit that switch first. And this is very fast paced, you want to make sure not to miss your sword at all. And we'll get it just in time without that one NPC blocking our path. We're trying to run all the way around here. This is definitely one of the tighter runs of the game. Takes up almost your entire clock. Breaking this generator here to turn off the electricity. And then we're going to slide our sword inside that gear. But now our sword's stuck in the gear, which this is actually a very interesting part of the game casually, is you no longer have your sword. And usually in the game, you would need to use your sword in order to get through to this area, area at all. So you need to figure out a way to get back here without using your sword in any way, shape, or form. Funny enough, for the speedrun, we just take the same route twice in a row. But again, this is another one of the very tight runs. We actually have to achieve our objective before there's eight seconds left. So, put out the water with the watering can, get the mega sword, head up the reverse belt, and we need to trigger this cutscene before while there's at least eight seconds left. And that allows us to start the boss. Now, this boss is going to have a lot of resetting. Um, that's mostly so that we can get into this next phase with minimal damage, right here. Now next up, the furthest away sword is going to light up and throw more swords at us. Uh, we want to hope for a good alignment so that we can actually throw our sword early at them. That might hit? No. Okay, got lucky there but still pretty good. We'll throw there, excellent. And we're good. All right, time for phase three. We're unfortunately in a really awkward spot, but we can follow the spikes, and now we're in a bit of a safe spot in this lower section. There we go, so good so far. Oh, don't move too, too close. And we're cutting it really close here, but we should be able to just barely make this. Yep, and we're good. Wow, that was close. <laughs> the boss is definitely one of the uh, tighter runs as well, but you always respawn with your progress. So it's never too much of an issue. Next 
Next up, we just need to exit, the, exit this area and head out to sea with the toilet. And that was minute. That was a uh, 8.21 with a one minute time loss. That was a very, very good run. Um, that was super solid, very clean.